call the Thursday, January 17th, Bruins Select Board to meeting to order. Uh, to my left, far left, is uh, Peter Kelly. My left is Wayne Lamberton. To my right is Jeremy Hansen and um, Angelina Capron. I'm Brad Town. Also with us is Dana Hadley, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, our treasurer. Uh, additions or changes to the agenda, Dana? Yes, I'd like to add a discussion on the annual town meeting warning. Okay. Anything else? No. Um, public comment? Hearing none. Treasurer's report, Diane? Yes. Okay, I've given the select for the December trial balance, budget status report, and delinquent tax reports. Uh, last time I told you I was going to be reviewing the budget status report because we were six months into the fiscal year. So all I wanted to do was just go over a few of them that were kind of going over or over, you know, what we had budgeted. It wasn't too, too many. Really, it was really good shape otherwise. Um, on the recreation board, we went over because we bought a snowblower. Okay, so that's to be to be thought, you know. That's, that's coming out of their fund yeah. at the end of the year. Um, also, if you if you were to look at the budget status report, some of them like are seventy five percent. That's because some of them I pay in advance. For instance, the uh, insurances uh, for workers comp. I've already paid three quarters the installments for the year. Okay, so those are, they are where they're supposed to be. It's just that I've paid them in advance. And some of the insurances I pay two months in advance, like the health insurance. So that is, they're still in line, but for December, they look like we've spent. And more. many lines are not divided equally right. for each month. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, on the police part time wages, uh, we budgeted 20000 um, right now they're at 22388 so I do know that's already over budget, but it will be over budget by even more. I'm sure there will be more, you know, part-time help. Um, let's see. And then on the equipment maintenance for the police, we have budgeted 13000 They've spent 10000 almost 11000 so far, so that probably will go over budget. And the gas, we budgeted 14000 They're at like 11000 now, so that will probably go over budget as well. I don't think extremely over budget, but it's still be over budget. Uh, guardrails, we budgeted 6000 and the guardrails were 10000 And that was a bill we got from Lafayette for Crosstown Road. Right. Okay, so yeah. they had to do some report repairs We had to there. do that. Yeah, yeah there were some uh, motor vehicle accidents, and so we had to replace those. Going down the hill. Yep. And on the erosion control, uh, we budgeted 5000 We're like at 7000 now. And that was from Pike Industries that we that That's Rip Rock. Yeah. yeah. Rip Rap. Yeah. Okay. And otherwise than that, that's it. I found that we're you know, going to be over budget. So on the guardrails, were there accidents because the guardrails were faulty or were the guardrails damaged because of the accidents? Um, the guardrails were in very poor condition, but I can't say that the guardrails were the cause of the accident. But we're not going to get reimbursed. The insurance no. isn't going to. No. Reimbursed. I mean, it... It wasn't an accident that damaged our guardrails. Okay, that's yeah. a better way for next time. Yeah. That's all I've got. Okay. Thank you. Um, and now the run agency of transportation. <laughs> right yeah, come on. Yeah, okay. come on. All right, sure. thank you. Um, my name is Natalie Boyle. I am the project outreach coordinator, so basically I'm the PR communications person for this project. This is Bruce Martin. He's the project um, manager with VTrans, and Matt Gamlin is in design. He's over there. So thank you for letting us come. Thank you for inviting us to um, kind of bring some information and, and let the, the citizens of Berlin kind of know what to expect and what's going to happen. So for my part, I... Um, contact stakeholders, area businesses, municipalities, try to get out as much information to as many people as possible in regard to VTrans projects. So on this one, I've already built quite an extensive stakeholder list of um, area businesses, particularly those that would involve tractor trailer deliveries or things of that nature, just so they know, because we're Gosh, we started contacting them in October, November. Um, so trying to give everyone a really nice long lead time on this project so they know what's coming, they'll be able to contact their suppliers and 
for the six weeks or so when this project does require the um, exit to be closed, they'll be able to make, you know, alternate arrangements. Um, I have, and if, you, if you're okay with it, I can leave these here sure. on the table. Yeah. So I have some project um, fact sheets with some information. They include the detour route and they include some of the um, project information, my contact information, as well as Bruce and Pete Hodgson, who is the resident engineer snuck in in the back on me. Sorry, Pete. <laughs> And also um, an email sign-up sheet, and if you don't mind, Dana, if that's get filled out just to get that back to me at some point. Of course. Yeah. Great. So if you would like to be included on my updates, basically once we get ready for construction, I will start sending out updates on a weekly basis or more often if needed, particularly as we get closer to the closure and while the closure is um, happening. And we saw EMS walk in. We also coordinate with um, area EMS, state police, um, local um, Ambulance, hospitals, schools, I have a lot of schools on my list as well. So for my part, if there's an issue or a question for the project, it's most expedient, most efficient to go through me and then I can direct concerns through the, the, through the best channel to get information relayed as quickly as possible. So that's my part and I'm gonna let Bruce tell you all the technical things and all the fun stuff about the project and how it's gonna work and the reason for why we're doing this and why uh, our closure is required. Sure. Somebody to help hold some of those? Or um, would work I'm good for right now. Okay. Um, like Natalie said, I'm Bruce Martin, project manager in roadway design for V-Trans. Um, this project was actually programmed because this area has seen numerous rock falls in the, in the past. Uh, this is about 1,400 feet in length, 600 feet is within the exit itself, and another 900 feet on the main line of the interstate. And it has a failure plane that if it does fail, has the potential to overwhelm the traffic lane. Actually, we had a failure back in July of 2012. At, uh, luckily, it was a nice, bright, sunny day. It was uh, 2 p.m. In, in the afternoon, and it actually, the failure caused the uh, material to actually go across the, the uh, travel lane, and um, some material actually made it to the median. Um, this, this was on main line, but this failure plan exists throughout the entire exit, um, the entire length of the project. Um, so this project was programmed because of that failure and the potential for more failures, and we uh, looked into some alternatives as to exactly what we should be what we should do here. We looked into alternatives of you know, stabilizing this. This is like pinning it in place with some um, rock dowels or putting some uh, shock crease, basically just to hold it in place. And um, the other alternative was to lay the slope back um, using bl blasting alternatives. And we looked at the cost of it and basically the life of the um, the treatment that we'd be using and the cost effective way to go about this would be blasting it and laying it back in a one-on-one -on -one slope. Um, there is a lot of material here, so I'll show you the typical that we are working on. So you can see this light dashed line is kind of the existing ledge, and what we're planning on doing is cutting it back on a one-on-one -on -one slope. So as you can see, 1,400 feet of this is a lot of material. Um, 600 feet of this being in the exit itself, if there's a potential for a failure, it would actually consume the entire exit. Um, what led us to, to the closure is obviously with this amount of material being able to consume the exit is that if we do a blast, the material will, will be there and we need to truck it out still, we need to muck it out with excavators, load it on many, many trucks um, that are just going to be moving back and forth and it just really wasn't feasible to, to have traffic and all that <coughs> uh, machinery there, and that the equipment there at one time, there really isn't enough room because there is a ledge on the outside of the curb there as well. Um, so we, we, we thought it would be more prudent to, to close the exit. Um, we did look into alternatives like putting some, uh, some fencing along the roadway itself. This could require a slight shift, but the fencing itself is, is very cumbersome. Like the contractor would have to put it in and then do a blast and then move it every single time there, there's a blast. And also with the amount of material that we're looking to move, the fence isn't really feasible because it could overwhelm the fence as well and still make it to the, to the roadway itself. Um, so we are looking into what, what's the best way to you know, get in and get out and that would be closing the exit. Um, during blast, blasting times, all exits will be closed. I mean, right now we're just planning on closing the northbound off-ramp. Um, but during blasting, obviously, we don't want traffic going through the area. So we have rolling roadblocks on the interstate itself, on um, northbound and southbound. And that's when we'll have um, you know, the sheriff department or UTOs will be starting down at like exit five and uh, moving their way slowly as it approaches the project. And this will give the, the contractor enough time to make the blast, blast, 
check all the roadways, make sure there isn't any flat rock or debris in, in the roadway, and then make sure it's you know, safe and clear for, for traffic to go. And then the UTOs will pull over and allow traffic to, to continue throughout. Um, so we will have one lane closed uh, during on the interstate, you know, throughout the life of the project. So we'll be down to one lane just because there'll be a lot of material that, that is going to be moved as well. Uh, so what this means for, for Berlin, obviously, is that our, our detour is going to be sending everybody to exit seven and, you know, down 62 to 302 into Barry City and around. Um, I do foresee that a lot of vehicular traffic is going to be getting off exit five. However, exit five is a very steep grade, you know, exit down to Williamstown. Very steep grades, not not good for, for trucks. And there's actually a sign on the interstate stating this. Um, so I do foresee the trucks will have to make this route out around. Um, the vehicular traffic, I'm assuming that they're going to be using all, you know, other methods. They're not going to be going all the way around. I see, see some of them probably getting off exit five. Um, some of them could be using you know, the side roads within Berlin itself. Uh, but you can't expect to see any increase of traffic going through Berlin uh, during this time frame. We have um, plan of closure uh, to start around the middle of June. We like to just wait until school is out because they're all school activities and we don't like to close roads and schools are in place, but we are planning on it starting around mid-June. Um, have it for six weeks. We are incentivizing this to really get the contractor in and out. We're allowing them to work uh, seven days, seven days a week. We will not have them working on holidays, so we do have provisions in our contract that says that if a holiday like 4th of July this year is, is going to be a Wednesday or in the middle of the week that um, the exit has to be open the day before, the day of, and the day after the holiday just to allow for any increased holiday traffic uh, through this area. Um, so like I said, we did, we did look through many alternatives um, and this is the one that will actually give us the longest life. Like we can actually lay the slope back and we will never have to come back here again. Whereas if we had to stabilize it, there's going to be maintenance throughout and still potential for failures that, that we can't control. So we thought this was our best uh, best approach at it. And um, I know it's, you know, when we close down any roads, closing down an exit is definitely an inconvenience for people, but uh, this is the, the safest alternative that, uh, that we went with and that's why we're moving forward. So any questions from me right now? Not from the board, but I, anybody else have questions? Sure. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm uh, Joe Staub, town resident in Berlin Fire. Um, so back at exit five, you're going to start your rolling roadblocks. Is it fair to say that your signage will start prior to exit five? Yeah, yeah. I believe we'll probably have a, um, a message board before exit five just notifying um, individuals that exit six will be closed. So vehicular traffic can can um, can start before then, but we do. We do have lengths and, and guidance. I'm not exactly sure exactly what those lengths as to what the signage for rolling roadblocks will be, but we do have, have um, provisions for that. And well, I was much familiar with the Georgia project that was happened last summer. Okay. And you do have, you know, kind of a, a countdown, a three mile, two mile, one right. mile. Um, and then I sat there in traffic for 20 minutes. They had a problem that day. Um, but regardless, I do know you'll have that type of signage. Yeah. So when um, your truck traffic comes down to exit seven to go to the, the detour of which you're proposing. Um, is there any um, thought in changing the timing on the light system here to um, expedite, expedite the, the traffic that we are getting? That is something that we can look into. Unfortunately, that's not really something that I can really predict right now right. because I don't know exactly what the you know what what queue lengths we're going to have or what the the volume is going to change. Um, that is something that we can potentially look into during traffic, and if there are, you know, longer queues during during construction, we can work with the timing on that. I believe these are all state-owned lights, so we can work with our, our Tismo group and um, and work on some adjustments on that to make it a little better. Yeah. Peter Brusso, FL Brusso Stone Products, adjoining landowner, Corey. Um, you did say, hi Natalie, we have talked on the phone, hi. Um, you did say that it is going to be a closure on northbound Correct. and then a rolling stop on southbound cutting across onto Correct. the Correct. We're not, road. yeah, there'll be rolling roadblocks on north and southbound interstates. Um, so we're not going to let anybody on at that point just because it is close, close proximities to the exit itself. Like we have a, do have a blast radius that we don't. Yeah, we see. deal with that a lot yeah. when we blast. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> 
the northbound will be closed at all times, but during when there's not blasting going on, southbound will be open, and the on ramps will be open as well. And you figure it will take approximately five to six weeks before we're done. I mean. And, you know, I'm a little concerned given the fact that we could lose three hundred thousand dollars in that period of time as a, a joining landlord right next door. I think, I think, and I hope it'll take less than six weeks to get in there. That's why we are incentivizing it, and hopefully the contractor can move. Do we know where this material is going to be going? That is actually up. To, we're three hundred feet away. That is actually up to the contractor, and I think yeah. it, once this project hasn't been been um, advertised yet, it's actually advertised next week. Um, so since you are close, it'd probably be beneficial to reach out to wherever the contractor is. We have it up on our website. Um, possibly there's going to be a lot of truck traffic, empty and loaded, going through the city of Erie. A lot. Because mm -hmm. you have everybody all the way down through, including us. You have jet service. You have Pike. You have Booth Brothers. You have Bella Vance hauling a lot. Okay. There will be... Empty going through Barry coming back up the location? Who knows? Depends on if they're coming or going. I mean, we'll have trucks coming in empty all the way through the city Barry, loaded all the way through the city Barry, mm -hmm. back and forth. I couldn't make the Barry one, but you know, everybody from <coughs> Advance to Booth, that going be a lot of it. Right. And, and you know, like Nana said, she has reached out to a lot of a lot of those people, and I think we have talked several times. Right? Yeah, and, and I know some of those. Businesses are probably using town roads anyways, and they'd have to be permitted for that. Um, but that's that's a separate issue. Um, apart from us, anyways, that they would be dealing with the town on that. Um, like I said, we we did have traffic counts at this location. It didn't show high numbers of, of truck traffic at this location, but that obviously can be um, can be misleading or not accurate from what we have. Twenty, so. thirty, forty trucks a day. Yeah. But, you know, ten wheelers. Just, just for your pay, correct? Could be just for our pay, yeah. I mean, you know, that's not a guarantee, but, you know, we're talking 250, 300,000, maybe more in that short period of time that we could lose in the middle of the summer. That could put us, it's a lot in, you know, six weeks. Well, like I said, um, maybe that's something that you'd want to actually talk to the contractor when they are out there. Well, I think we should get that squared away prior to them getting out there, you know, find out who's going to get it and then approach it from there. Yeah, definitely. Well, okay. I guess, I know, said, our, our, exit, our turn is about 300 feet from where you're working, right. and we are adjoining landowners right there. But, it, but that's just something that the that, that state can't make involved with. Like I said, we are advertising this next week. It's going to be a four-week advertisement period, so I think it, we're opening bids on the, um, the 22nd of February. I believe that, num that date stands out to me. And we'll have the information on our website, and um, all of our products go to the apparent little bidder. So. And I don't mean to hold anybody up, but could you tell me the mitigation situations you looked at prior to doing this? Yeah, like, I couldn't quite hear everything. It's um, rock dialing mm -hmm. and yeah. um, shock reading, so just yeah. trying yeah. to try to stabilize in place. Uh, they do have some rock dials there, but it's, there's still potential that if a failure did happen, those rock dials would hold it hold it all in place because there is such a, a large volume. Like I said, we were looking at the treatment options and the blasting and the amount of rock dials that we need and the amount of shock creep that we need, it's basically <coughs> leveling out. And this is something that we can just do it once and not have to come back with back out again. And that's going to be let out, I said, on the 22nd? It's going to, yeah, this will be open on the 22nd, I believe, of February. I'll be in touch with you. I was going to say, I can be in touch with you too Please, once yes. we know that there's a contract, <clears throat> a contractor chosen and, and a contract. I can just fire that information off to you and then if you want to that I'd rather you, not do it at all and, and sure. keep business going. But then, you sure, know, but then you can away. at least reach out to the contractor yeah. mm -hmm. as okay. early as you want to and, and try to help mitigate some of that okay. um, for you. But yeah, I can definitely get in touch with you when we find that out. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And not a question for you, but maybe for the board. I don't know if they would entertain the idea of changing the weight limit while that exit was down to um, accommodate FL stone products. Um, and I don't know if that would... It, it probably would make a big difference if we could get off the lower one and come back through on the back road right across by jet service. Right, that would make a big difference. Or Airport Road, Miller Road, we'd have to, yeah. we'd have to talk to uh, Barry Town for that, but that to me would be logical. Thank you. Yeah, so. So, yes. so I live on, on East Road, which is the road you just yeah. talked about, and so I was a little concerned about the impact on traffic going over East Road and uh, and how that will affect our quality of life. 
you know, summertime, dust, you live on a dirt road, you increase the traffic. I know, I'm not a real fan of dusting, so <laughs> so I'm curious more than anything about about how that might evolve. And and I didn't know about weight limits. Um, so that's good to hear. I'm glad there are weight limits. I don't want a bunch of tractor trailers figuring out that they can get off the other exit and backtrack and get back down to the hill very easily on East Road. Um, but also just regular traffic, I'm, I'm sure it's going to increase a lot. And, and, and uh, you know, how, do I, how do I deal with that if it gets to be too much? Anything we can do. So I share that concern. Yes. yes. Right. You're only closing the <coughs> northbound. The exit. northbound operative, correct. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out. They can't get off there, so they can't get onto East Road. Is what I'm thinking right, through. Right. Right. But then they'll go, because I do it all the time. You go down to the next exit, exit seven, and you go uh, past Shaw's and Applebee's. And then you just take the next right, and you're on East Road, and it connects you. It runs parallel to the interstate. Right, but what I'm saying is the exit that you can't get off is coming from Williamstown and getting off in Southbury. Right. So you'd be coming from Williamstown. You'd have to get off the Williamstown exit and take the back road to exit 6. Uh well, my daughter works at Dartmouth every day, so that's what she's going to do. But I can see it doesn't take much to look at Google and say, well, instead of doing that, I can just go buy it and then come back. And I don't have any steep hills to go down, and I don't have to go through Barry City. And gosh, that would be much more convenient. Right. No, I understand what you're saying. I was yeah. just thinking this through that uh, you would have to go buy it by. <clears throat> five miles and then back five miles to do it that way. If it was me, I would get off at Williamstown and take the back road over to exit six. Mm -hmm. I was thinking more along, along the lines of the trucks. Yeah, I think that we should look at, I personally think we should look Miller. at opening up Miller Road and Airport Road for the duration. I think that's a reasonable request. It's paved. I don't know how very town would feel about it, but we'd have to ask. Something I can I can look into. A few years back, I'm sorry, a few years back when uh, the airport project was going on, they had a lot of ledge removal there, and I believe Pike got the contract for that. But they had proposed something similar was for moving all the material from the airport, was to go across the airport road down to the airport. Right, and they, they did it, and then they paved that road for the town. That's correct. Uh, for the right to, to use it. But, but that was also to save all that truck traffic right. from going through the middle of Barry City as well. So there's some give and take there. Mm -hmm. So I, I can actually, I want to look into some, some opportunities. There may be some opportunities to actually get some grant funding um, for the town um, for these issues that you're bringing up. Like what I'm, what I'm hearing is like increased traffic. Maybe you want some increased law enforcement or something like that. And there might be opportunities that actually could actually get some funding for you. Um, we'd have to kind of like look at a a map of the town to see what we think the the alternative route is going to be because it's based on you know town road miles um but that is something i can look into and um a temporary traffic light at miller road and airport road might be something we would need to do this um but yeah i think i think it's certainly worth looking at because six weeks is a long time yeah i'll take a look at that that takes into account, you know, enforcement, like I said. I it would be full paving, and I don't know if a, a traffic light would be involved in that, but it's funding for it for you for what you... But I mean, a portable on a trailer, yeah. traffic light, yeah. you know. <coughs> so I think, um, I, I think it comes back to about East Road, about where you guys would be hauling this, and whether you... So we were talking about using Miller Road and Airport Road rather than East Road Correct. for hauling debris. Because East Road's posted. Right. Well, they're making sure that any of the heavier traffic doesn't use East Road also. Well, of course, hauling debris, a lot of it um, would depend if uh, Mr. Bruce can work out something with the contractor, because that's... That's the logical place to haul it, too. What's that? Yeah, 350 feet away? Yeah. yeah. So it's 
Right there. They're sure. joining landowner. So. so that would take the only traffic would be coming down uh, or uh, getting off the uh, exit would be mostly cars. So if you if I yeah, wanted sorry. to deliver to Mr. Brusso and that exit was closed, I'd come to exit seven and need to go back over there. So what I'm suggesting is the airport road and Miller Road to get back there. Mm -hmm. After I delivered to Mr. Bruce, I could get back on the interstate because that exit is not closed. That's all. This wouldn't. It would be a lot to me, a lot smoother than Barry City. And this is something that if this is something the town wants to agree with, I mean, you can definitely tell Natalie because she can be in contact with some of these trucking companies that she's mm -hmm. she's reached out to mm -hmm. and, and notify notify them as well, just yeah. to make things easier. I think the town is probably agreeable to it, but it would be Barry. Very tight. Very tight. They've well. got a short piece. There. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Dan Courier, Central Regional Planning Commission. And yeah. so um, I just wanted to mention if you do want to have that as a truck route, that you request that it gets signed as a truck route. Um, and so, and maybe have that be part of the work that VTrans comes up with if there's any funding available. Um, and then, two, what, did, uh, what were the reactions from Barry Town um, and Barry City? To the, to these meetings. the biggest reaction is kind of a reaction that's been brought up here is where are the trucks going to go once yep. they take the material away. Yep. And again, we said that that's something we don't know right now. Yep. And we can't find out until there's a contractor on board. So. Absolutely. Uh, I will just say um, I do know that because um, I've been working with Barry Town on the Miller Road section that is used by heavy trucks already out of Booth Brothers. Mm -hmm. So it's already a, basically a truck route in Barry Town's mind. So I don't know how many more trucks they really want on it, but it's in their eyes, it's a truck route, um, and it's been functionally classified as that as well. So they're doing it by permit now. It's still posted, right? So that posting would have to be lifted for the duration, right? So, but the hurdle may not be as hard as right. I think. Yeah. <laughs> any other comments? Um, my name is Bill Wine. And my son, I'm here on behalf of my son, he's got a couple of businesses down on 14 South, and he's concerned naturally about loss of business during the time, uh, you know, uh, that takes effect. And I, I guess, you know, it may be foolish, but I'm just asking a couple of questions. Have you, have you looked at moving any legs on the northbound uh, section of exit 4, get, getting off, in other words? Exit four. I mean, no, excuse me, exit six. As you get off, there's some ledge on the left, north yeah. there. Have you looked at moving any of that so you can set that road over a little bit and perhaps develop a lane? We have to use it. Do a crossover. We, we did. We did talk about that. I mean, we didn't really look into it in, in full detail because of some of the grades right there and, and the uh, <coughs> vehicles being off the, the other way. Um, so we didn't really. Okay. So look you can, at I mean, you looked at that and you don't think it's possible. I don't think it's been, I don't think it's as effective as what we're proposing right now. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm here just to say, you know, it's, it's a loss of work and business for a lot of people, not only him. Yeah, so. Right. And, and, and that's why, I mean, we, we understand, like I said, this is an inconvenience for a lot of people, and that's why we're trying to, you know, we started talking to people back in October, and um, we're here now, not May. Right the other thing I had a concern with, and I've been to several of them on the, on the 64 going down to the Williamstown, trucks getting off there that don't know the road. And what's your plans for, you know, additional signs on the interstate as well as on 64, even after they get off to warn them that, you know, that's a serious hill? Yeah, it's already signed on the interstate, so I don't know what... <laughs> I mean, we can't really fix people that are just not paying attention to our signs anyways, besides if there's you know, local law enforcement that can, can take a look at that. I mean, it's just really a bad hill for them yeah. that don't know it. And once they see this is closed, truckers look at some other areas, like they do the knots. I mean, you know, they have a lot of fun up there. They have a lot of fun up there, yeah. All right, thank it's you. Tough. And do you want to sign, want to sign up for... If you want to get emails, yeah, like then, you, then definitely hit them on. The last thing that I have to say is, for, if this for some reason got postponed, this project, you do know that they're closing exit, exit 7 the following year. There are deck projects, bridge deck projects yes. going on, yes. 
and both exits are going to be closed north and south at different times. Yeah. And north and south together are going to be closed for a period of time. So, yeah, we're we're trying. We we've uh, we actually thought about doing this a year ahead of time. However, there's a, a bridge closure in East Montpelier that they're sending in traffic kind of in the same location we are. So we're trying to just you know get right, right in between these projects, right. knowing that they're going. But on. if six and seven were both closed, we'd have a problem. We would definitely have a problem. I agree, hundred yeah. percent. So, yeah. um, so one other thing, we we are planning uh, a a public meeting one month before the actual closure. Two weeks before the actual closure. Twenty-one days, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's something that you know we can let everybody know that this is coming. You know, this is the date that once I mean the contract will have a schedule then. So this is the date that it's happening. And then once it does get closer, we will have a meeting with the the contractor. The, the contractor will set up with BMS you know, individuals as well, just so everybody's on the same page and and we are know that um, you know the plan of attack as we, we move forward. So. And typically at that last public meeting before the closure, the contractor will be there, which is really useful because he'll have his schedule and in mind what they're going to do specifically. So it's a really good time to get a feel from the contractor of exactly what they want to do, how they want to do it, when they want to do it. Um, so that's always nice to have the contractor present and you can really pick their brain if you'd like. <laughs> Yeah, Victor Bochic, town resident as well. With exit seven's uh, closure coming up next year, you might not know the answer to this, Bruce, but um, has there been any forethought to changing the slip ramps at exit six in such a way to accommodate extra traffic in the future? Because right now, with the way the exit six, that off ramp you're talking about, and you're going to close with this project, it comes down and the two lanes merge in such a way that one side has to yield. Well, if exit seven is going to be closed next year, and during that exit seven closure, you're going to want to expect a lot more traffic coming off at exit six to avoid exit seven. Is there any possible way to get those slip lamp ramps to come together, two lanes, and then merge further down? Has anybody thought of that for in prep of the exit seven closure? You're right. I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. I don't know a lot of details on that, but. Somebody else might have. I have some insight into that. Uh, during a park and ride analysis that was done um, for, I think we was on East Road, where they were going to put right by jet service, they looked at those options um, because there was going to be a new turning movement um, to the left. And so that turning movement was, was a concern and being able to have the stop distance. And so um, not being able to put both lanes, not being able to run two lanes side by side. I'm not saying it shouldn't be looked at again, but that's what we found during the park and ride where we didn't want to add additional left turn lanes, turning traffic, and then have two lanes of traffic running side by side. So created an unsafe um, you know, situation at the intersection. So. I did bring up when we were talking to AOT about the bridge deck project next year and the year after, I did bring up the airport road detour to them as well, because we're going to need the same thing going the opposite direction. So I think when we look to Barrytown and talk to them and talk to our road folks here in the town of Berlin, we should look at that. This could be a temporary three-year detour. Yeah. Um, I can definitely speak with the, uh, the project manager on that. Mm -hmm. I think it's my but I'm not sure. <clears throat> I mean, their, their closures are short, per se. Yeah. Uh, but there's several of them. Right. So it's like four two weeks yeah. or closures. Yeah. Another question for you, Bruce. If it if dust is an issue on East Road, is there a possibility of adding um, a dust control item with, for East Road on the contract? Or that would be part of the funding that I'm going to look into. Some of the grant money that I can give to the um, to the town. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank, Thank you all very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. If anybody wants to leave their email address here, please come up. <laughs> yeah.
enough turners. You can always call me too. Thank you, Angelina. Right, as a kid left. Um, I meant to mention that Jana will not be here this evening. She has rescheduled to February 7th. Okay. Uh, approvals of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. Got a waste. It's still working. No, okay. Uh, bids for audit services. We did put out um, an RFP for audit services um, for for one year with the possible extension for an additional two years. And we received a proposal from, and this was not a closed bid, um, we received a proposal from Father Gil Segal and Valley, who are uh, the firm, who is the firm that we've used for the past three years. And um, I had included that in your packet um, for 2019, the financial audit of 14000 if there's a need of a single audit, we expect we will need one because of the sewer project. That's a $3,000 item for a total of 17. And for years 20 and 21, the audit, the financial audit, increases $500 and the single audit stays the same. We will not need, I don't believe, three years in a row of a single audit. Um, and we may not need one in 19, um, but we will need one eventually. The other bidder, and, and there is Sullivan Powers and Company, also a very well-known accounting firm in the area, and they have bid um, for three years, 19, 21,000, 2020, 21, 6, and 2021, 22, 3. Um, you had asked me to include for the fire department so we could do economies of scale. They did give me um, those, and I was just going to pass them over to the fire department so they could make a decision um, on their own um, for that. Do you know what we, you know, we paid last year over, or this or we paid, I believe, 13, 13 yeah, 13.5. 13 yeah. I was actually, I was actually asking. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Do you know what the audit cost was for the fire department? Uh, yeah. Oh, and I should have looked that up before I came here. I'm sorry. I didn't That's right. Hold on. I, I might be able to get it. Who did the audit? This one here? Sure. Who, yeah, who, who did the audit, Joe? Mm -hmm. Excuse me? Who, who did the audit? The, the, the last true audit was done by Batch Elders. Um, and last year was also was a review, which is also done by Batch Elders. So we had said that that wasn't allowed anymore. Yeah. Right. So we don't really know. We've never really... I haven't. We have they, not. Well, they, before they started doing the books, they did the audit. Right. when all of the bookkeeping was done internally. So they did the audit, and then we said, okay, now that you've done the audit, you've gotten a sense of it, they essentially handed it over to them. So, yeah, I don't, um, I don't know whether that, the timing the so, next one or who's... Uh, who's it, it was roughly $5,200. 52, okay. So... I'm familiar with both of them now, and I really love Sullivan and Powers, but that's a lot of money yeah. to do the same thing. Yeah. And I'm very, I am very pleased with Father Gill and Sagali. One advantage we do have with Father Gill is they are familiar with us. We've, yes. we've done a lot of the yeah. continuity. Yeah. In the very helpful. So the numbers you have on the paper was combined? No, no, that was just for the town. The, so again, the town, the proposal for the town. It's about so, an $1,800 increase, I'm sure. Yeah, Father, uh, with Father Gill, uh, 14000 which is 500 more than we paid this right. year. 
um, and going up 500 each of each subsequent year. Mm -hmm. The single audit would be three thousand yeah. dollars. And I think it was twenty five hundred before. I and believe. yeah, yeah. And we paid twenty five hundred to the well, single. I'll make a motion before. to accept the proposal of Father Gill, Sigalian Valley, for an audit for two thousand. Fiscal year 2020, is that correct? Um, 19. It'll be FY 19, 20, and 21. 19, 20, yeah. and 21. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries. And I'm going to just hand the fire department the, uh, the proposal for them. Um, this is, they've got hours included in there, so. Sorry about that, but it's yeah. <laughs> So if we are going to include the Well they will they will contract on their own and pay on their own. Oh. It's just sharing. So the same. we just hoped that we they would get a better price by using Father Gill. Using um, well, being same, with us. Being together. Okay. I don't know if that's so or not, but um, okay. it was worth a shot. We can try. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, also, while we're talking audits, I've given you a copy of the um, audit ending June 30th, 18. So you can read it at night when you're bored. When you can't sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and that will put you to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Approval of the select board report for the town in report. I presented to you the select board report that I put together. Um, I am always open for suggestions if you'd like to include something or if you'd like to delete something. Uh, it is much in the same format that the board has used for a number of years. I think this is fine. There's, I think there's a name, um, a typo on um, Officer Pickle's name, P-I-C-K-E-L is, is how it's called. Thank you. Second page, I think. Yeah. No, I didn't pick up on that. Hmm? So I didn't pick up on that. Diane, you're not going to be my proofreader. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'll fix that. Uh, and we wanted to be able to, if you vote to accept it, I can give it to Corinne for the town report. Mm -hmm. We have to approve the select board report as um, presented, the previously noted um, in correction. Sorry. So, your separate meeting. Your separate meeting. Yes, thank you. Any other discussion? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. My motion carries. Okay. Um, Dana, you had a thing you wanted to put in. Would you like to? Okay, yeah. the town meeting warning. Uh, Rosemary gave that to me this afternoon, and I did make copies so you could look at it. As soon as I get my hands on it, you can look at it. There is really um, no changes from year to year. Um, you did vote on the operating budget, which Rosemary has, has put in. And we we'll just pass those along. It, and the others, um, the zoning regulations are on there for voting on the zoning. The others are the agencies that have requested funding from the town. And finally, on the floor of town meeting is the election of the town moderator, as well as the schedule for real estate taxes and personal property tax due dates. Basically identical to last year with a few date changes and number changes. Exactly. It's Kind of unexciting, so. We got a budget over three million dollars. Yes. Yeah. 
It's up about 70,000 from the previous year. At some point, <clears throat> I want to talk about adding um, a, a fire pond on East Road. I don't know if that... Okay. Maybe have an agenda item and if there's... Some sure, I'd be glad to put it on the agenda if you want to talk about that. Um, I think we'd need to involve the fire department as well. Okay. Yeah, what's the closest dry hydrant to East Road? We talked about the exit six, sir. We did, yeah. Is there any information that you can get right here? Home? Yeah. yeah. Would you like to be included in their, their mailing list? Uh, yes, please. If you want to put your email Thank there, you. she will email you, and there's a little information on it. I think at the bottom it says we won't share your personal information. That's good. <laughs> so I am an auditor, so I can't have. <laughs> I know, Wayne. <laughs> I assumed you did. <laughs> Sorry, Mark had intended to come and forgot because he had a prior commitment that he got tied up with and then totally forgot and I was at a prior commitment. So I apologize for interrupting. No, no, no. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here, so it's just dry hydrant is actually right out here on Crosstown Road. Um, however. What's that? However, the closest hydrant for East Road is part of the new hydrant system. Right. Oh. So and on, on the other end of East Road at the entrance to Brusso's Pet is a pond there that if an emergency needed, we will come alive. And it would be handy to put a, hydro, a dry hydrant into that pond. Uh, I've been in contact years ago with Mr. Nippling, who was the pro uh, property owner, but he lives out of state, and then we weren't able to connect to make something work there. Sir, what's the closest pond? Well, we could take one in the <laughs> I'm not aware if any of the other property owners on East Road have a pond in their yard or not. No, and then several years ago now, um, the neighbor up on the up on the hill right on the corner there, her house burned down and I just remember it was late at night and the trucks were hauling water from that pond over on um, 63 over there. Over from the entrance of Brusso's. Yeah. yeah. We got water from there when, when that fire occurred. Yeah. Let's see here. I'll move that we approve the town meeting warning as printed. Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, town administrator's report, David. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, approval of select board minutes for 12 2018. Move to approve the minutes for the Thursday, December 20th, 2018 meeting with the Burnham Select Board. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Those opposed? <coughs> Wait a minute here. December 20th. Okay, motion carries. Um, town Administrator's report, David. We have received the monthly EMS report um, from Barrytown Ambulance. Um, it also has the year-to-date report. If you'd like, I can copy it and send it along to you. That has the, the statistics. Um, they had total calls for service um, in 2018, 3,875. Prior year was 3,764. And then he has broken down of what types of calls they were. Um, we also received from the state the 2018 equalization study results. Um, the common level of appraisal for the town of Berlin is 102.14. Last year it was 102.45, so we really didn't have much of a difference. The coefficient of 
dispersion has improved from 17.98 to 14.9. Um, and we also, this year, will have the new update on mobile homes, which um, you contracted to last year for the um, April 1 of this year's grant list. Right now, mobile homes alone are at the uh, coefficients 20%, 20.56, so that really... Skewing it. Skewing it, and that's why you decided to, to do that. Um, the, um, that project is going fairly well, and they believe they're going to be on schedule. Uh, I am going to ask the assessors to come in and visit with you um, as this project gets completed to tell you and and also to update you on um, their preparation for the grand list. And that's all I have to say. Okay. Um, let's see here. Convene what board? Go to the recess to select board and convene on the control board. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have this is the time of year when we have liquor renewal requests and the first renewal request I have is the China Moon Buffet at 1400 U.S. Route 302, and this is a Class 2 license. And I have no reason to suggest that you don't approve it. Could we maybe get the, the, the whole do list? Yeah, do, you want me to tell you all of them? Yeah. Yeah. Do them in mass. Okay. We have two on China Moon. Oh, I guess everything has two copies. Sorry. Applebee's, 199 Payne Turnpike North. Maplewood, 159 Payne Turnpike, North. Shaw's Beer and Wine, um, Payne Turnpike, Burling Corners, Vermont. And that's it. Okay, so that was, um, what were the, the three that was it? China. China Moon. China Moon, Maplewood, and um, Applebee's. Applebee's. Applebee's and Shaw's. Okay. Um, move to approve all four of the liquor licenses for those four applicants. Second. Any further discussion? <laughs> I have the same. <laughs> all, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And those opposed? Motion carries. One abstention. If you, I need signatures all around. Um, I'll do a couple of each. Yes, I'm going to just pick a line and just sign all. Okay. We're going to adjourn the liquor control board and reconvene the select board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, round table, Pete? I think I'm all set. Oh, wait. Licenses, permits, oh, etc. Okay. Um, oh yeah, uh, approval of license permits, vouchers, and applications. Move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number 19G14 with checks 18793 through 18840 in the amount of $58,840.25. Also general fund accounts payable warrant, no warrant number CNB02 paid through ACH in the amount of $20,617.73 for the truck loan payment. Also, payroll warrant number 19-14 for payroll from December 23, 2018 through January 5, 2019 in the amount of $51,639.61. Also, December 2018 reconciled bank statements for the General Fund, Sewer Commission, and Water Division. Also, the General Journal and Tax Admin entries for December 2018. Sorry. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Wayne? From the road people? Jeremy? Angelina? What? Anything with the. Uh... I would like an executive session, please, under personnel. Um, I move to enter executive session as provided by VSA, um, section 1. 313A3 to consider a candidate to be hired as an officer for the Berlin Police Department. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.